I have Eli Lubroff here, who is the CEO and founder of Desmos. Great to be here. Hi. Thanks for having me. So Desmos, in case you guys don't know, um, is, I mean, well, why don't you explain it? That's your job. Sure. So Desmos is different than when we launched in New York. I guess it was May of last year yeah. at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent conference. And uh, at, at that point, what we were was a browser-based solution for making content that would work across all different platforms. So it's an education company through and through. And um, I actually need to give TechCrunch a lot of credit for our change in direction. Because on stage at Disrupt, uh, just off the cuff, um, I said, right after showing some of our math software, I, I said, uh, Texas Instruments, you better watch your back. And everyone cheered, and I got all warm and fuzzy inside. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? This, this could matter. And so we ended up taking our software and focusing on what was the most novel, the coolest, and the hardest part of what we did, which is making it easy and interesting and fun to do math in the browser across any device. And um, so, yeah, when we launched the calculator, it was uh, about September of that year. Okay. And uh, it was also completely in Flash. Our, our original product was completely in Flash. And we decided it was time to go HTML5. Uh, the calculator was kind of a free product. We figured that it was advertising. It was not the core of our business. But as soon as we turned it into HTML5, which took us about four months, it was, it was hard, uh, we noticed it was both way, way, way better and way more engaging, way more engaging. People were spending up to 10 times as long on average on the HTML5 version than on our Flash version. Uh, we have a, a couple hypotheses about why that is, but I think the big reason is that it's better. It's just a more fun piece of software to use. What did you tell me earlier? You said that there was a certain page with like 100 equations that used to take 40 minutes to load or something like that? Yeah, it? yeah. So when we launched it, um, we were figuring that, that we should do what existing calculators do. You could graph up to 10 equations. Why would you ever need more than that? So we made it work great for 10 equations, uh, which is a hard challenge in HTML5, getting right. it to render 10 equations well. And we noticed that someone did a graph with 20 equations, and it wasn't working very well. And so we decided to buckle down and make it work well for up to 50 equations. There's no way people would do more than 50 equations. Noticed a kid working for like three weeks on this graph of the Aston Martin logo, ended up coming out to 140 equations. And we're like, this is amazing. We got to feature this. And put it up on our, on our Facebook page, tried opening it, and it took like 30 seconds to load and to render and do all of that. So we sat back down at the drawing board, and we're like, going to have to make it support 200 equations. People want that. <laughs> Uh, did that, immediately saw a 350 equation graph. Our biggest to date was 480 equations. It's a complete chessboard. Wow. It took this student, it was a 10th grader, uh, three weeks to make. And what, what's so exciting about these projects, it's completely unexpected for us that yeah. it would be used for these kinds of like project-based learning. Um, but it's also amazing because these almost always come out of like extracurricular or curricular um, assignments where it's you just learned conic sections, now graph your favorite cartoon character or something like that. And there's no way that you can go through this without also learning the math, but it's fun. It's fun. We've had kids say, this is the first assignment I've ever enjoyed doing. It's like always been my dream to make software that makes math fun for other people because it's always been fun for me. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been quite a journey there. Right now we can support up to 500 equations. We're working on pushing it to 1,000. Wow, that's intense. I can't do a thousand equations. I can't. Neither can I. I can barely do one. <laughs> Neither um, can I. So we were going to get a demo up for you, and we had our own issues with that. But I want the, you to show them the back of your shirt, because that's actually a graph that someone made, right? Yeah, so this is a graph. Can you see this one here? Yeah, so the rocket ship, right? Yeah, and these are actually all the equations that the kid used to graph the rocket ship, uh, designed by our own Christine Chapa. That's awesome. And. Uh, the, the kid who made this, he was a 10th grader. It was an extra credit assignment, and it was to use all of the different conic sections. So you could see if you looked closely at that, there was an ellipse, there were hyperbolas, there were parabolas. Spent a couple of weeks doing it. He said he got perfect score on his extra credit, <laughs> we hope. We made it in a t-shirt, sent it to him. Um, yeah, so, so cool. If you look closely at it, we actually have that graph up on our Facebook page. Yeah. And there's a flag in the corner that actually has 13 stripes, and he only did 49 stars. We sent him an email saying, like, lazy. <laughs> you have to fix this. Yeah, yeah. got to fix this. So, I mean, what are some of the biggest challenges that you faced? It's been a little over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, our auditorium is filled with uh, aspiring entrepreneurs, current entrepreneurs, startups that are about to launch. Yep. What are some of your biggest challenges, and what advice would you give to people that are about to launch on stage? Um, so a few. Uh, the, the hardest, I think, about a company always is assembling the right team. Um, and we've been incredibly lucky. It's, it's still a small team. We have uh, eight people, six full-time, a couple part-time. Um, but just all like really, really extraordinary, dedicated, very smart people. 
Um, so that's, that's a challenge, but that's been going really well. Uh, converting our software to HTML5, building perhaps one of the most advanced HTML5 web apps out there from what we've seen, that's hard. It's hard to do. It's also super fun, so that's, that's been great. Um, and then education is a really, it's a really tough market. Um, it's a tough market for a lot of reasons. It's, it's a wonderful market. It's growing. We've got all of these peer companies that I have a ton of respect for. But teachers have been burned over and over and over again with having like really bad software foisted upon them. And so what we've noticed and what we've seen in our peer companies is that making a product that's like good just won't get you into the classrooms. People won't even notice. They won't take the time to adopt it because they're so busy. Teachers are so busy. Right. And so getting adoption in classrooms, it's really different than something where like it'll go viral in a heartbeat and right. it doesn't matter how quality it is. Making a product that teachers get excited about is hard. And fortunately, we've been able to do that also. So what would you tell our entrepreneurs that are about to step up on stage? Um, don't be nervous. It's, it's really scary up there, uh, for one thing. Um, but everyone's kind of got your back in this space. I mean, this is a place for, for entrepreneurs. And the big thing is to just like go after what gets you really, really excited. Uh, that, was, that was kind of our epiphany. Like cross-platform yeah. content, the technology was cool, the impact was not. Um, ever since we switched to focusing on changing math, making a project base, making it exciting, I've woken up every morning being like, we might fail, but it doesn't matter because this is really important and this is really fun. That's awesome. So. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah, thanks for having me.